she's not next to Bob. No, there's, there's a space right here. Oh, okay, that's me. <laughs> there's a space Job, we say, Adonai Natan, God you have given. You gave us a loved one who will not be forgotten. For all is good and enduring in her life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. We poem by Kathy Sink. 
Take time to talk, for you may ask of all things unknown to you. Take time to laugh, for smiles relinquish sorrow and spread happiness. Take time to think, for the realm of knowledge is never ending. Take time to see, for there is beauty in every part of the world around you. Take time to feel, for the emotions of your heart often control the reasoning of your mind. Take time to live, for each day is filled with new opportunities that will be gone tomorrow. Take time to dream, for survival is forever challenging the powers of your imagination. Take time to love, for the sharing of all these things is a true miracle of life. I'd like to share a poem Andrea, Adrian uh, sent to me, asked me to share, called Do Not Stand at My Grave and Weep. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glint on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there, I did not die. And I'd like to share another poem by the Israeli poet Zelda, entitled, Each of Us Has a Name. Each of us has a name given by God and given by our parents. Each of us has a name given by our stature and our smile and given by what we wear. Each of us has a name given by the mountains and given by our walls. Each of us has a name given by the stars and given by our neighbors. Each of us has a name given by our sins and given by our longing. Each of us has a name given by our enemies and given by our love. Each of us has a name given by our celebrations and given by our work. Each of us has a name given by the seasons and given by our blindness. Each of us has a name given by the sea and given by our death. Psalm 23, Adonai Roi Lo Efsar, Bin Adesha Yar Bisaini. If you're familiar with the words of the 23rd Psalm, please join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters and restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The Baal Shem Tov, the Hasidic Rebbe, once observed that there are three ways we mourn. The first is with tears, the second is with silence, and the third is with song. When we mourn someone truly beloved, we experience all three. Tears at first, then silence as our grief settles more deeply. And finally, song as we are able to celebrate the memories we hold deep in our hearts. So today may be a time for tears as we say our final goodbyes to Paula. We each remember Paula in our own way. Terry and Scott, you remember Paula as a loving mother. Sarah and Michael will remember Paula as a devoted grandmother. Paula was an adoring great-grandmother, Nana, to Gabriel, and a dear sister to Adrian. Paula was born on January 9, 1939, to Bernard and Zelda Ratner at St. Luke's Hospital here in Cleveland. She was a gorgeous baby. When the nurses first brought her into her mother, they put ribbons in her curly red hair. Paula's mother entered her picture into a contest. She looked like a doll. The young family lived at 106th Street, and then four years later, when Paula's younger sister, Adrian, was born, the family moved to First Avenue in East Cleveland, then Belmar in Cleveland Heights, and finally Beechwood when Paula was in her early teens. Because Beechwood didn't have upper schools yet, Paula went to Shaker Heights Middle School and High School. Paula was extremely bright. She had a photographic memory. When she read something, she could repeat it to you verbatim. Paula didn't have to study to get good grades. 
Paula was confirmed at the temple when she was 15 years old. Adrian remembers when they were young, their parents took them to Euclid Beach, Euclid Beach Park and Cedar Point, and they went on many picnics as a family. Paula eloped at 18 right out of high school and started her family. They moved to North Cliff Road in University Heights, where, where um, when Terry was nine months old, when Terry was just nine months old, and Paula remained in that house until she became ill this past December. Paula took great pride in her home and loved planting flowers and pots on her patio. Paula's house was always well kept and she was independent and self-sufficient. Terry was very close to her mother. She remembers walking home for lunch from elementary school when she was a little girl. Her mom was always waiting and had lunch ready for her. Chicken noodle soup, bagel bites, or bologna sandwich. Paula was a great cook and had Terry's family for all the holidays. When the kids were young, holidays were spent at Paula's parents' home. She was very close with her parents. Paula adored her dogs, Jezebel and Mandy. She had a group of, of friends in the neighborhood women who took turns playing mahjong in each other's homes. When Sarah and Michael were born, Paula would come over and stay with them and their pets when Terry and Scott had to go away. But more regularly, Terry would bring the kids over to visit Paula. She would always have a new toy for them to play with, and they would go out to lunch. Their favorite was the Cheesecake Factory at Legacy. In recent years, Gabriel joined them, making it four generations. Paula was crazy about Gabriel, and he loved his dad. Paula and Terry spoke every day, sometimes several times a day. They discussed shows they were watching on TV, such as The Masked Singer, Yellowstone, or Blacklist. Paula enjoyed reading magazines. Terry remembers that when she was young, they didn't have a lot. Paula raised her children with limited means, and she taught them you have to make, make do with what you have. In later years, Terry always felt her mother was very generous with her. Paul and Adrian went on trips together. They enjoyed going to Las Vegas a few times. They both liked to gamble on the slot machines, and they saw wonderful entertainers. Once, Paula was playing the Titanic slot machine, and when all three parts of the ship lined up, and she won $10,000. The sister also enjoyed going out to eat here in Cleveland. They frequented Gorky and Lenny's, Rio, Maggiano's, and Hoa. The sisters also liked to shop together but they had very different personalities, like yin and yang. Paula was an extremely private person. She was stubborn, and she had a marvelous sense of humor. She was very quick. Paula enjoyed listening to music. She had a great ear, and she could tell if someone was just off key even a little bit. Paula was a good friend, very loyal, and she had friends for a long time. She was close with her dear friend, Evie, for over 55 years. Paula met Donna Lee when they were 16, working at the May Company. She found that they were born on the same day, and so they referred to each other as their twin. And Paula met her good friend Sandy when Paula answered an ad in the Cleveland Jewish News because she was in need of a driver. Sandy began driving Paula to do her shopping and became a dear friend. So today is a time for tears. We are, we are saddened by the loss of Paula, but we learned much from her especially how to care for one another. Let these tears serve to strengthen and uphold you as a family. There's a story in our Jewish tradition about a rabbi who, pa who passed an old woman planting trees. Old woman, he called, why are you planting those trees? You'll never live to see them blossom. But the old woman replied, my ancestors planted trees not for themselves, but for us, that we might enjoy their shade and their fruit. So I too do the same for all those who come after me. Paula planted an orchard for each one of us, an orchard filled with devotion and with love, and these will always be here for us. We must be grateful that we're able to share in Paula's life. Tomorrow there'll be fewer tears, more silence. As a Baal Shem Tov noted, it'll be time for pondering, a time for contemplation. Paula will become a greater part of our characters and our very beings as we integrate the memories and the values she taught us through our own selves. But finally there'll come a time for song.
maturity and youth to age. From innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing. From foolishness to discretion, then perhaps to wisdom. From weakness to strength, or strength to weakness and often back again. From health to sickness and back, we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see victory lies not at some high place along the way, but having made the journey stage by stage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage made stage by stage, El Malay Rachamim Shochen Bamromim Hamse Minocha Nechona Tachet Kanfe Hashina Im Kitoshima to Harim Kazora Harakia Mazirim at Nishmat Heisha Hatovazot Shalaha La Olama Bal Harachami Yastirachu Besetter Kenafav La Olamim Beyetzer Bitzer Hakayim at Nishmata Naihuna Halata Betanuach Bishalom Amishkava Vinomar Amen compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe. Grant perfect dressing and sheltering presence to our beloved Paula Vecchia, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in eternal presence, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace, and let us all say Amen. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember blowing in the wind and the chill of winter, we will remember her. In the opening of buds and the rebirth of spring, we will remember her. In the rustling of leaves and the beauty of autumn, we will remember her. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember her. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember her. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember her. So long as we live, she too shall live, for she is now a part of us as we remember. Our tradition, the place of birth of the coffins, and that type of devotion we can show to Paula. We can even pull out a flower, and maybe the ladies would like to throw a flower in, and then you can take those flowers home. We can pull out a, a flower from the pack and throw that in, and maybe hand pull of, of the dirt. So um, let's, let's move out and let uh, Terry go first. Slide over. Terry and uh, Adrian can go, and then we will come back to do a prayer. Just hold on. some
COVID to those who have gone before. Take them in. They're frozen by now, you know. Yeah. 